you found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky, and this is our friend Bear who loves to read along. Bear has a question for you. Ever wonder what you would say to a leprechaun if you trapped one? You'd say, lead me to your gold? <laughs> well, Clever Tom is about to catch his first leprechaun ever. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see if Tom gets his leprechaun to lead him to gold. Clever Tom and the Leprechaun by Linda Shute. One fine day on Lady Day in the harvest, Tom Fitzpatrick took a ramble down the lane. Click, clack, click, clack, he heard through the hedge. So Tom tiptoed closer to take a look. The clacking sound stopped when Tom peeped through the bushes. And in the shadow, what did he see? Why, a big gallon pitcher and a teeny tiny man with a brown leather apron and a three-cornered hat. Up the small man climbed on his wee wooden stool and dipped his little piggin into the crock. Then he settled down with his full mug beside him to hammer on the heel of a fairy-sized shoe. By the powers, thought Tom, it's a leprechaun. If I catch him and scare him, he'll give me his gold. Since I'm a clever fellow, that should be simple. Before the sun sets, I'll have my fortune made. Tom stared at the leprechaun and tried not to blink. He knew that if he looked away, the old man would escape. Then he crept up quite near and tipped his hat politely, saying, Good day to you, neighbor. Blessings on your work. Thank you kindly, said the small one, but he never looked up. He just kept on tapping at the heel piece of the brogue. Tom moved his hand closer while he smiled very sweetly and said, Today's a holiday. You shouldn't have to work. The leprechaun frowned and answered Tom sharply. If I do, that's my business and none of your own. Instead of pestering me, young man, you ought to be watching your father's fields. Look there. The cows have broke into the oats. See? They're knocking the corn all about. Cows in the cornfield. Tom's head started turning. But he wasn't fooled by the leprechaun's trick. Quickly, he grabbed the sly fellow and cried, Now you're my prisoner. Tell me, where is your gold? The leprechaun wiggled and twisted and whined. I'm just a poor man. But Tom held him fast. You and I both know you're lying, said Tom, and he made a fierce, frightening face. Finally, the leprechaun quit squirming and said, Tom Fitzpatrick, you're too clever for me. I see you are after my buried treasure, so I'll have to show you where it's hid. With his eye on the bitty man locked in his fist, Tom followed where the leprechaun led him. He traipsed over a hill and under some hedges and through a ditch and across a peat bog. At last, just when Tom feared he'd been hoodwinked, he found himself in a great field of weeds. Dig there, said the leprechaun, pointing to a bush. Deep under that Bullion is where I put my gold. Thunderation, said Tom. I need to fetch my spade. But when I return, I'll be lost. There are 40 acres of bullions here, and each plant looks just like the other. 
Still watching the leprechaun, Tom figured out a plan. He tied his bright red garter on the bush. Swear, you old rascal, that you won't take this off while I run back to get my spade. That I will promise you, the little man said. Tom grinned, knowing leprechauns always keep their word. Now, since I have shown you where my treasure is, I don't suppose you'll need me anymore. No, said Tom, my fortune's made. You may go, and good luck go with you. Then goodbye, Tom Fitzpatrick, said the leprechaun. May you do much good with what you find. Away Tom ran as fast as he could, figuring how he'd spend the gold. Then back he came with his shovel in his hand, back to the field of bullions. But when he got there, lo and behold, a garter just like his own was tied to each and every bush as far as he could see. Tom dug under the bullion where he thought he'd tied his garter, but nothing was buried under that bush and so he dug under another. He dug to the east and he dug to the west and still he found no treasure. The harvest moon rose as he dug to the north and it set as he dug southward. When the sun came up, Tom saw he dug a hundred holes and tired Tom Fitzpatrick knew. He couldn't find that gold, so he gave up and headed for home. From then on, Tom always carried his spade, and he never stopped listening for a tapping in the field. Every chance he got, he'd tell how he nearly found the gold. And since I'm a clever fellow, Tom would end his tale, the next time I catch that leprechaun, I'll have my fortune made. Those leprechauns! Ugh. Do you think clever Tom felt a little foolish? Tom may be clever, but now we know that a leprechaun can be ready with a trick or two up his tiny sleeve. Bear and I hope you're ready to outsmart your first leprechaun. And we really hope you come back soon for another clever adventure. Bye for now.